Mother Nature put on quite a show before tonight's fireworks and forced some festivities to start late. From heavy rain to lightning, the weather dampened many of your plans. Lightning lit up the sky over downtown Fort Myers one strike after another. A dangerous mix when thousands of people are outside during the 4th of July festivities. And we're beginning with meteorologist Zach Malak, who's tracking all these storms that are still firing up tonight. When I come back. And you know, there was a great show over downtown Fort Myers tonight. Despite the lightning and the rain, the show topped off Freedom Fest. A lot of family friendly fun, a special viewing area for the veterans for this fireworks show. And just a few minutes ago, the fireworks show wrapped up over Lemon Bay in Charlotte County. Pyrotechnicians spent hours getting ready for it today. But the Rotary Club, they spent 10 months planning the annual fireworks show, and it came with a hefty price tag $40,000. And that was all paid for by donations. And President Trump in Washington, D.C., he promised the show of a lifetime in the nation's capital, and he delivered. There were flyovers, tanks on the mall here, and plenty of patriotism. But not everybody was impressed with the Salute to America event. In fact, some protest groups clashed with the president's supporters and actually burned American flags right in front of the White House. Just look at this. Back up! Back up! Now, several people were detained in connection with these protests, but despite the clashes, President Trump says the American spirit is stronger than ever. And we streamed the entire Salute to America ceremony from Washington, D.C. on the web. If you missed any of it, you can check it out and rewatch it right now on the Wink News app for your smartphone or tablet. All new tonight, the family of Alana Tomlin wanted to connect with their daughter again with a very special lantern release, but Mother Nature had other plans. The Night Beats, John Carlos Estrada is live in North Fort Myers right now. John Carlos, 4th of July was Alana's favorite holiday. And then an all day affair just got extended. Cape Coral's red, white, and boom celebration had a little hiccup in the form of this video, Mother Nature, the rain, the wind, the lightning, the thunder. In a matter of minutes, though, that fireworks show is expected to begin, and people are lined up at the riverfront. The Night Beats' Stephanie Byrne is live in Cape Coral. How's it looking there, Stephanie? All right, Stephanie, we'll check in with you in just a bit. And, you know, there was also a constantly energized crowd coming into the Naples Pier for the fireworks there, too. Here's some video that uh, that celebration that just wrapped up a little while ago. People loaded up, brought their chairs out here, camped out on the beach, and they got settled into their spots ahead of the show. Many people we spoke with today told us for them, coming to see the fireworks is a great way to celebrate our nation's independence, no matter how far they had to travel. And one of the lieutenants at the Naples Police Department says a lot of people made their way to the area just for the beaches. They were packed this year and actually more crowded than usual for the fireworks this year. Well, breaking right now, a man is in critical condition and two women are in the hospital after a stabbing at a blood donation center. This is our first look at the scene that's unfolding in Petersburg, Virginia. That's just south of the state's capital, Richmond. Police say a suspect stormed into the center with a cutting instrument and stabbed several people this afternoon. The other victims are expected to recover, and that suspect is in custody tonight. And here in southwest Florida, a man is facing a boating under the influence charges after crashing a jet ski into a woman and two kids near the Sanibel Causeway this afternoon. Investigators say the woman and two kids were riding another jet ski when the man crashed into them. Florida Fish and Wildlife officers say the crash happened just off of the beach in the middle of the causeway. Thankfully, the woman and those kids are expected to be okay. Well, it's an attack on the dead. Lee County deputies say this man stole brass flower vases from dozens of graves and then sold them as scrap metal. Those vases are, were taken by Edward Hornung. He's accused of stealing them. They're worth $6,000. We talked to several families at the Lee Memorial Park Funeral Home in Lehigh Acres. One of them just too upset to talk to us on camera. But she says one of the flower holders at her brother's grave was missing. Hornung was out on probation for the theft but is now accused of stealing again. So deputies are trying to find him. Disturbing new video tonight shows a Florida man shooting a shark. And we've got to warn you, the video we're about to show you is 
very graphic, and we're only going to show it once. Now, prosecutors say Michael Wenzel shot that shark four times. You may remember this video went viral. He took a plea deal for it in February after this video surfaced of him and two other men dragging that same shark behind a boat. Another man on the boat, Robert Banach, passed on the same plea deal and goes to trial in September. With the new video of the shooting, prosecutors say he could face up to 10 years in prison if he's convicted. Wink News, the weather authority. Well, we had stronger storms early on this late afternoon, early in the evening. Now just seeing a few remaining storms over the Cape Hayes Peninsula. We'll track those few showers and have your full forecast when I come back. And Fourth of July is a big day of celebration, but it holds a special meaning for our friends who fought for our freedom. I serve my country and it means more, a lot more to me than just fireworks and celebration. Still ahead on the night beat, the importance of Independence Day to our veterans and something lurking in our water that can eat away at your skin and it's making people on our beaches very nervous right now. The warning before you hit the sand next. We all live living by the water, but north of us, there are several cases of flesh eating bacteria infecting people, and that's raising a lot of concerns at the beach right now. But as the night beats Anika Henninger found out today, it's not keeping people out of the water. Well, that infection comes through an open wound, and warning signs include skin irritation, nausea, or chills. Well, it's a new warning from the Department of Health. Don't eat puffer fish. They look like this. They say the fish contains saxitoxin, which can make you sick. They released this PowerPoint presentation that says you can't see or smell the toxin and there's no antidote. The warning stems from a case of a South Florida man who ate the liver of a puffer fish within days of also using cocaine. He became violently ill and almost died. Florida Fish and Wildlife also prohibits anyone from hunting puffer fish in the first place. We are learning what killed a woman from North Naples. Investigators say 64-year-old Karen Lighty got hit in the head by an object in her home. They say this woman, Amanda Cook, is responsible. She refused to get up in front of the camera at her first appearance today. Investigators say they found Lighty dead on the living room floor in the Imperial Golf Course community. Cook says she fell over a speaker but then found blood on an object. New tonight, an attorney for the family says a lady's daughter is beside herself and doesn't know what she's going to do. Well, let's take you back to Cape Coral live right now where the red, white and boom fireworks are officially underway. They just got started about 30 seconds ago. Take a listen to this. They got a great soundtrack going with it, too. It's a great show. We'll keep an eye on this and let you know once it wraps up. Well, the deadline looms for this mulch pile. And in a matter of hours, MW Horticulture has to have this pile gone. After that, if they don't do it, the company will be fined $200 a day until it's gone. This pile's in North Fort Myers. It's made up of debris left behind from Hurricane Irma nearly two years ago. The pile is smoldering and has been for months, and the company has already missed multiple delays and on the deadline to clean this thing up. Well, the first day of school may still be a little while away, but it's never too early to start thinking about the safety of students. The second class of the Hendry County Schools Guardian Program just graduated. School guardians have to complete 144 hours of firearm safety training, pass a psych evaluation, and pass a drug test, and hold a Florida concealed firearms license. A warning to all dog owners tonight. This is Charlie. Charlie's owner says he suffered from a heat stroke and died after 30 minutes in this stretch of extreme heat we've been experiencing. Charlie died after his body temperature soared to 109 degrees. Veterinarians say if it's too hot for you to be in the sun, it's likely too hot for your pets, too. That's the lesson Lori Christie learned the hard way, and now she wants to share. A judge is facing backlash because he says he didn't ruin a teenager's future. And the case sounds similar to another one where people were not pleased with the sentence. That story is still ahead. And a body wash is on shore in a lake and police fear an alligator is involved. What we know so far about the man who died. Plus, remembering the men and women who fought to protect our country. Next, the inspiring people who are doing just that with a special game of golf. And as we go to break, we'll take you back out live again to the Cape Coral Red, White and Boom celebration. This is a live look at the fireworks show, which continues right now. 
Well, the price of freedom is heavy for military families whose loved ones return injured or don't come home at all. That's why golfers gathered in Naples today to support spouses and children of fallen and disabled service members. The night meets Melinda Lee shares the growing 4th of July tradition and its inspiring impact. And golfers raised more than $40,000 today to go towards scholarships for children of veterans. New video from California as they work to clean up from today's earthquake, how people are salvaging the holiday after the big shakeup. And a Miami Dolphins player loses his arm. The crash that put him in the hospital in just minutes. And what does the 4th of July mean to you? We talked to some Collier County veterans on the importance of Independence Day. Now, from Southwest Florida's news leader, this is Wink News at 10. A renewed push to find a woman from decades ago. Do you recognize this person? The new effort to give a family some closure. Shake, rattle, and roll. Southern California spends much of America's birthday cleaning up from this earthquake. We are live at this epicenter in just minutes. And a divine sign. A car fire burned everything two sisters had inside except their Bible. Their touching story is up ahead. But we begin with some breaking news right now. A large fire in Glades County may affect your electric service if you live in northern LaBelle. That fire is on Marshall Field Road. The Hendry County Sheriff's Office says they don't know how long it's going to take to bring the power back on. Well, there's just an hour and a half left in America's birthday, and today has been filled with a lot of festivities, especially here in the nation's capital. These are some of the scenes from the Salute to America earlier today. But what does the 4th of July mean for people who put their lives on the line for our country? It means more to me in my heart than the picnics and party. That's, that's good, too, but it's better. It's, it's, it's a feeling deep inside. It's that's from some of our veterans in Southwest Florida. We will get to that in just a few minutes. But first, the night beats Katherine Johnson wraps up the day from Washington, D.C. It's more than just the day of barbecues and booze. Veterans say that while today is a lot of fun, the 4th of July is an important celebration of patriotism and the freedom that they fought for. The night beats Jerica Valtiera talked to some of them today. The 7721 Post has more than 800 members, and each 4th of July, they tell us about 300 make their way to the Post to celebrate. A veteran celebrating Independence Day with a brand new house. Tony is a single father of five. He started working with Habitat for Humanity last year, and now, after putting in work and saving up money towards closing costs, he has a safe place to call home here in Fort Myers. And with that being said, he now has his new home with a flag flying proudly outside of it. We'll take a close look at this picture. Do you know who this woman is? Investigators just released this rendering of a woman whose body was found off the coast of St. James City all the way back in October of 1995. 24 years later, they still don't know who she is or how she ended up in the water. She was wearing a red medical smock, which had the words Charleston SC VA Hospital on it. They were able to use technology to create this rendering of what they think she looked like. Crime Stoppers is hoping this photo can move the case forward. We posted this picture to the Wink News app so that you can open it up and see what she looks like, share it with people you know, and hopefully help crack this case. If you recognize her, call Crime Stoppers. Police are working to figure out if an alligator killed a man. A body was found near, allig in, near an alligator in St. Petersburg. Investigators say they believe the gator was involved somehow, but they're not sure if that's what killed the man. Police add the body was badly decomposed. The search is on for the driver of this black Lexus. FHP says the driver slammed into a group of Good Samaritans early this morning in Orlando after they stopped to help a man who got hit by an SUV just moments earlier. The man who initially got hit and one of the Good Samaritans died. Two other people were rushed to the hospital. The driver of the SUV has already been arrested. A Miami Dolphins player is in the hospital right now after losing his arm in a serious car crash. 
Doctors say they had to amputate Kendrick Norton's left arm after he crashed his Ford F-150 into a concrete barrier and rolled it over near Miami this morning. He is expected to recover. There's no word yet on the cause of that crash, but one other vehicle was involved. And that driver was not hurt. And a man fleeing from Hillsborough County Sheriff's deputies caused a rollover crash, sending three people to the hospital. We have pictures of it right here. Investigators say just before noon yesterday, they got a 911 call. When they got there, Troy Tatum Jr. took off in a car with a woman and two kids inside and eventually crashed. Tatum is now facing charges of aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer with a motor vehicle and fleeing to elude. Well, it may be July, but with less than six months until primary season, Democrats gunning for the White House are not wasting any time engaging with voters. Almost every name in the race pounded the pavement today. Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, and more swarmed early voting states like New Hampshire and Iowa. Early polls still show Biden as the frontrunner, with Senators Harris and Warren making strides with primary voters. Right now, cleanup is underway after a huge 6.4 magnitude earthquake in Southern California. Look at this new video. This is home surveillance video just getting shaken all over the place by that earthquake. See stuff falling to the ground here. And look at this mess. This is inside a Walmart. Look at all the stuff that came flying off the shelves. Boxes everywhere. Let's head out to the Night Beats. Paul Van Kamen, he is live near the epicenter of the where the earthquake struck in Southern California today. And even though Florida is no stranger to flooding, some of you still don't have flood insurance. Why well, you may want to rethink that coming up. And it's a sign from above. The one thing that survived this car fire and a pair of sisters say it was no coincidence. Those details after the break. And here's a live look at St. Louis. Their fireworks show going off over the arch looking beautiful this evening. You are watching Link News. Do you believe in miracles? The two sisters who escaped this car fire on State Road 80 certainly do. Just look at this car going up in flames. The fire destroyed everything except one thing, this Bible. It was in that car as it was burning up in smoke. It was in the front passenger seat. The two sisters tell the night beats Bray Hollingsworth it's a sign of something great. And the sisters say they are still not sure how that car caught fire. As for Joelle, she was able to get a new car right after the fire. Well, today is meant for lots of explosions, but not at the actual fireworks store. A fire broke out just outside a building in South Carolina. Look at this. Yeah, that's not supposed to be happening. The fire closed roads as firefighters worked to put it out. Fortunately, no one was hurt. And right now, a New Jersey judge is facing backlash for the ruling in a rape case. Critics say he was too lenient on a 16-year-old boy accused of assaulting a girl at a party. Prosecutors argued the teenager shared video of the incident and admitted to rape in a text. The judge described the suspect as coming from a good family and was doing extremely well in school. Legal experts say that's not enough. The judge faces comparisons to former California Judge Aaron Persky. He sentenced Stanford University student Brock Turner to six months in jail for assaulting an unconscious woman because a prison sentence would have, quote, had a severe impact on him. Netflix is cutting back on the depiction of smoking in their shows. The announcement comes after a report from the anti-smoking group Truth Initiative. It said there was a 44% increase in smoking depictions in the second season of the show Stranger Things. The show's first season had the highest number of tobacco depictions of the shows they looked at. Netflix will also start including smoking information as part of its ratings. The freshman 15, it's not a secret, but it turns out it affects men more than women. A new study found women gained about four pounds on average. Men gained about twice as much, an average of eight pounds. Scientists discovered students tend to eat worse when they go to school. And even if you are not in an area that floods all the time, your house and your bank account could get wiped out if you're not careful. The Night Beats' Clark Howard is here to show us how you can protect yourself. What's another win for Joey Chestnut? He won the annual Nathan's Famous July 4th Hot Dog Eating Contest. Today, 
He ate 71 hot dogs, buns and all. That's the 12th time he's won the competition. He set a record last year of 74 hot dogs. And here in Florida, we had an eating contest of our own. Key West hosted the Key Lime Pie Eating Contest. The winner, David Johnson, devoured a 9-inch pie in 58.2 seconds, including the whipped cream. Contestants couldn't use their hands, but they were offered safety goggles and uh, one guy, he is going to town. He knows how it's done. That's, that's very impressive. Well, thank you so much for joining us here at 10. We hope you had a wonderful 4th of July. Last Man Standing is next on WXCW. And for more news, make the switch to Wink TV at 11.